Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Zulu's Painting Show. Uh, I've been away for a couple days. Uh, I had my first kid, but now I am back to continue painting uh, with the with all you delightful people. Uh, today, as we're hopping back, we're going to be doing some detail work on some of the goblins. Uh, this is from the Village of the Goblin Chief, one of the epic encounters. We're unfortunately out of them right now, but hopefully we'll be getting more in stock soon. We'll of course be using uh, the brushes we've been using from Army Painter. There's some new Citadel brushes, which I'm very excited to start using, but haven't had a chance to get any of. Um, so let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and just dive right in. So as you can see, these guys have been started. Uh, they've got their base coat of the green for their skin. And then we've got the brown on the wood of the different parts. Now some details I'm looking forward to bringing out on these guys are this little frog on his head, the frog in his hand. And I haven't decided yet if that thing on his belt is, or his neck is a frog head or it's something else. Uh, I might, I might just make it something else because the idea of it being a frog head is kind of a little grotesque, so. Um, I think to start with, I'm going to go ahead and start picking out the leaves. So this guy has a whole bunch of leaves and, um, this vine along his back. Um, it's going to be sort of interesting because he is already sort of green. So getting a distinct green will be an interesting uh, task. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. We're going to start with just a good old fashioned base green. Uh, we're going to do some green skin. Now, had I painted this guy with green skin, oh, actually, that's an excellent point. I should probably explain how I got to where I am now in case you haven't seen. So, this guy is two colors so far. There we go. This is the Contrast uh, Militarum Green uh, from Citadel. And then the brown is the. Let me make sure I find the correct one. I can over here. Stuff caught on things. Ah, oh, here we go. The Sigor Brown is the uh, the wood parts here. So that's our, our base. Uh, we also started with a Zenithal Prime. So the whole model was paint uh, was primed black, and then uh, the white primer. Uh, we came in at an angle with a little bit of dry brushing for some spots uh, that we couldn't quite get the primer into. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and hop over to our uh, green skin. Now, I've got a little paint shaker uh, over here, so hopefully it's not too loud. Um, good old-fashioned shaking things by hand is obviously more than acceptable. Uh, I figured, though, if technology can help me make uh, the shaking better, I might as well. Alrighty, let's see how this paint shaker performs. Be, sure would be egg on my face if I spent all that time uh, just to have it come out unmixed. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Speaking of which, today we are using a wet palette. Uh, I prefer to use wet palettes uh, for painting, not necessarily to go from session to session, but just because it makes sure that during a given session my paint stays uh, nice and wet the entire time. Um, so, we're going to go to our regiment brush. Oh, got to make sure we can actually read that. Regiment brush. And we're going to go ahead and start putting the green on the leaves. So, this little loincloth. We'll have to figure out what we're doing with that in a little bit. Make sure I am. There we go. And then we're just... Putting on the green. Now, what we're going to do, the plan for these leaves to really make them pop uh, is to go over them with, or to, to highlight them with a very sort of neon green. Um, we've done it before on a couple of the models, and it really brings out the, the color. Manages to make the green not look, um, not get sort of lost. Because, you know, it'd be pretty easy to do, what with having the green of the of the goblin and the green of the, the leaves. So. Yeah. 
Nice to be back doing some painting with you guys. Hope you guys are having a delightful time. Um, the last painting project I did was a, uh, a wash episode. And I'll be honest, I want to return to that. I was, uh, I didn't have enough time to get some of the prep done that I wanted to for it, so I felt like we were sort of lacking in some of that. Also, our color is kind of blown out. Let me, let me go to your little settings real quick. Let's see. There we go. Make sure it's not too bright so you can actually see what's going on. There we go. So one of the things I don't, uh, you'll notice that I, I will sort of clean out my brush on occasion. Uh, that's mostly just because I don't want to get it too gummed up. Um, making sure that I have kind of the correct, not correct, I uh, have a controlled amount of paint on my brush so that I'm sort of, I'm, I'm not surprised by little, little pockets of paint that have been sort of hidden between the bristles. Let me just check on the scene. Oh, that looks pretty good. I'm excited to uh, to play around with this this little uh, spear this guy's got here. <clears throat> I have a, a technique for making rusty metal that I think will be a lot of fun to play around with on this guy. I'm trying to make sure I make time for that. Now I've got four of these guys. I, uh, I think I'm, we've done we've done some work already on on batch painting. So I think what I want to do is focus on just one of these guys so we can kind of get all the colors taken care of but one of the things that i've done before in the past actually is when batch painting um you take and you completely finish one of them so you know what colors you want where you want the colors how you want to do them and then because that way if you know you're you're working on it and you notice you missed a spot then you can go back and fix it, and you're not having to go back to all of the your set. So, um, so yeah, this will be a good kind of example of a um, kind of a like a master miniature, so to speak, for a for a batch. All right, see, the green is already starting to become very distinct from the other greens. Now, I've noticed that the Army Painter paints are sort of um, opaque, so they'll show some of the colors through. So that's why I'm doing a couple layers on this guy, just to make sure it's all covered. I'm going to make sure that white gets covered too. The one little, little pinpricks of white showing up. And then when these colors meet like this, it's just good to just, you know, take your time. Make sure that you're not mixing your colors. There's a couple spots there I might need to come back for. Alright, so yeah, we got some branches there. It looks like he's got on his neck uh, some leaves as well, so let's go ahead and pick out those details. What's nice about a very sort of organic miniature like this is, were you to, to miss those for whatever reason, uh, decide that they were too small or just didn't see them. Uh, it does sort of blend in with the rest of the coloration, so I think it wouldn't be too big of a deal if you didn't end up painting those. So now, if you'll notice, the greens there aren't terribly distinct from each other yet. Uh, once we start getting some more color on this, it'll get a little easier to distinguish them. Also, I'm going to try something. Is that 
better. No. That's fine. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about the color of the leaves on his back. He's got a little one here that's sort of peeking up onto the wood. It makes it kind of look like I've gotten paint where it oughtn't to be. But that is, that's where it's supposed to be. All right, so let's switch over to his front side. So he's got, looks like a little uh, little necklace of leaves, the ones that kind of continues from the, uh, from his back there. So let's go ahead and keep on, keeping on, keeping on with those. Such a delightfully distinct miniature. Like he's, he's, he's got a lot of personality. And I really want to help sort of help that read on the table. So those tongue and eyes uh, and teeth are really going to get some attention. Plus that frog in his head. He's he's a big personality. You know, he deserves the, the attention. All right. So he's got this loincloth here. And I'm thinking... Just to make my life a little easier, what I'll probably end up doing is having the loincloth and the leather straps on the spear be the same, be the same um, color. I mean, it kind of makes sense too. You got like leather straps, you got the leather of the loincloth. I think that introducing too many new colors would, would make it sort of... A little messy. Now that being said, what we can do is, while the base color can be the same for both the loincloth and the uh, the spear straps, uh, we can give them a different wash and a different um, uh, highlight, and that'll definitely change it. But at the same time, it'll still have that sort of unifying color of the of the base color, which I think will be very nice. All right, so let's go ahead. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna say that the, the thing holding the bones on is kind of a grass, or is more of the, the thing. Also, I've noticed he's got these little arm straps here. I wonder... So he's got some some of these that looks kind of more metal. And what I might... What I'm kind of thinking of doing is making his his little whatever's around his neck and make that out of metal so we can sort of play around with some fun metallic stuff but we'll get to that in a moment so all right so it looks like we've got got all of his leaves taken care of i think what i might do so i don't i don't think that this vine would really get much out of a wash but with these leaves having all these details, I think they would be well served to, to get a wash. So, I forget which one I want to do. I got a couple of green washes. I think I might snag one of those to play around with it. So, built in green is my sort of, this is your more sort of just conventional green um, but for this one, I have this, uh, this green here, um, Colia, Colia? Green shade? So this one is, ooh, he's a little, little shaker. Uh, so this green is a little bit more blue, so this will add kind of an interesting look and color to our, uh, our leaves, which I'm kind of excited for. <laughs> I was watching a little bit more of the joy of painting, uh, and uh, so I'm definitely, definitely feeling some Bob Ross influence today. There we go. And yeah, this uh, this will just help bring out those the texturing of the the leaves that have been sort of modeled in here. Yeah, and as you can see, it has a little bit more of a kind of a blue green to it. 
and already we've we've sort of distinguished the the different colors between the um the leaves and the vines and we'll we're gonna gonna go ahead and do that a little bit more uh here in a minute when we get some highlights on it but for now this will be a good good way to help distinguish the colors Oh, got a little extra of shade in here. That's okay. The same property that allows the paint to sit on the brush can also be used to wick up your shade. There we go. Got a nice little bit of shading on those leaves. Really brought back out those those vine or those details, which is very nice. Kind of distinguished them a little bit from the vines, which is fun. Now, to just go ahead and finish up the vines, we might let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that real fast. Since we're here, so we're gonna grab our moot green, which as you can see is a very uh, sort of very shiny green. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on the shaker for a minute. This little shaker is very convenient. Hopefully it's not too loud. Uh, but I'm very much enjoying it. Hmm. Apparently I haven't painted with this paint in some time, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit separate. That's okay. That's why we got the shaker. It's also why you always shake, shake your paints before you uh, begin painting with them. Oh yeah, that's that's real noisy. Sorry about that. All right, and we're back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and to get the paints out of these Citadel uh, pots, you take your uh, I take the brush, just grab a little from the uh, from the pot. Take it and then roll it onto your wet palette to really try to get as much off of the brush as possible. Don't forget to clean off the back of your brush, otherwise you will always have a little bit of that color. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop over to our character brush. Character. We can get a little more detail out of these. Mostly because I don't, I'm not going to be doing terribly fine lines just yet, but I want to, oh, there we go. Let me make sure I'm in my focus distance. Hmm. There we go. And we don't, you don't need to do a particularly thick line of this light green. Uh, and as you can see, it already is sort of starting to change the overall sort of look of the, of the miniature. I'm just using the, the base sort of highlighting principles. So now that vine is that much more distinct from those leaves, which is sort of nice. However, the leaves have gotten very dark on me. Oh, got to remember to do both sides. There we go. So with those leaves being as dark as there, I want to bring those up a little bit. So we're going to go back to our original green. And because the, the original green had a wash on it, it's now become much darker. So when we go back to our original green and put it back on, it will look lighter than it did before. Now we don't want to get into the crevices. We just want to hit some of the edges.
So we might need to do just a little bit of that very bright green. Well, maybe not. We'll have to see. My my concern is that I don't want to, to make the leaves and the vines look exactly the same. So... Just a little bit of edge highlights with our original green just to bring that color back out all right we're making progress look at that now it's i think it's time for some leather so as it happens our uh paint set comes with a leather brown all right now for the loud thing again And we're back. I wanted to make sure you guys didn't have to listen to my paint shaker. Get a little dollop of this here brown on our palette. And what's nice is because we used the, um, we have that different brown for the, the wood parts, our leather is going to look distinct. Now, if you only had the starter paint kit, what you could do is mix a little bit of your red with your leather, and that'll make uh, a much richer color. Uh, the sort of thing that you might expect to see on a uh, on leather. So let's see. All right. So first things first. Let's go ahead and start with that loin cloth. Sorry. That is to say, if you just had to use your leather, uh, not your leather. Yeah, your leather brown for your wood colors. You can do it that way. Luckily, we have some distinct colors. I've I've talked about it a bit before, but it's been a while. I always like to talk about the difference between sort of uh, needs and wants when it comes to painting. Um, I mean, you obviously need paint and a brush uh, to to be able to to paint. I, someone could make the argument that you don't need a brush, but we're gonna go ahead and put that on the list as a need in the same way that you don't need a wet palette but it is very nice to have um and there are ways to to take things that are nice to have and uh, make them for instance i have these fancy paint handles but a bit of sticky tack and a paint pot or uh, like a dixie cup would work just as well in the same way that a paint shaker certainly not needed because I've got hands, uh, but uh, it does make it quicker, which I very much like. Sorry, I'm at some funky angles, so I'm not going to be able to really show you exactly what I'm doing. This spear is definitely in the way. Sometimes, just turning the model upside down makes it easier to get to some of the things. That's nice. It's nice to see the, the sort of the different colors starting to sit next to each other. Yeah. Nicely visually distinct look. <laughs> this Kaplan's lung cloth is sitting kind of low. Well, not too low. Oh, a little bit of leather on our, our vine. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. But for now, let's 
Let's go ahead and pop over to his spear. Oh, is that? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of hard to see, but there is a vine that wraps its way up the side. So we're going to have to come back to that. I'm in the middle of the brown, so we're going to go ahead and keep on that. But this is why sometimes it is nice to have your sort of master model so you know where all your different colors need to be. Oh, <laughs> got lost in my thoughts as I'm working here. Sorry about that, guys. Just very nice, calming paint. It was nice to, to just spend some time on a, a low-stress model, you know, figure out how you want to do the colors, play around with the different looks. I'm definitely coming back for that, that vine... But for now, just focusing on the leather. I think, I think for this leather, what I'm going to do is this, the loincloth is going to get a just good old fashioned uh, dark wash. But for the leather up here, I'm thinking I kind of want to do a crimson wash. I'm a big, big fan of the crimson wash. It does a lot of fun stuff with your colors. And it's a great example of how, you know, two of the same color can look very different just by putting slightly different colored washes on them. What's nice is, I feel like until you have sort of all your colors on the model, it's good not to, to go sort of changing stuff too drastically because the colors will change sort of how they look depending on uh, what colors are next to them. For instance, the leaves next to the leather there uh, look distinct because they have those two colors sitting next to each other. In the same way that this brown sat next to the darker brown look different because there the two colors are, are sort of next to each other it's always just a good thing to kind of keep in mind when you're when you're doing your paint jobs paint schemes all right i don't i want to not forget that he does have some some like straps around his ankles and his wrist might do those. I could do those the metallic. You know what? I'm gonna do those the metallic. I'm gonna give him some some different metal bits that he's wrapped around his uh, wrists and ankles. Just gonna get this brown done. I found that uh, doing things that wrap around, like handles, are always interesting because I feel like I always forget sort of to get all the way around, like a staff or a stick or a spear. All right. Does that look? Have I gotten everything? I think that's about all of it for now. Yeah, I'm gonna go back over with. Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna get that vine, and that'll really help uh, tie all this color together.
So now let's go ahead and do some washing. Um, for the for the strong tone, we're gonna go ahead and use our dry palette. Let's give this guy a quick shake. And we're back. We're gonna go ahead and put a little strong tone in our dry palette. Not gonna need a lot, so not gonna go too crazy with it. We're gonna go ahead and head back to our uh, monster brush. <laughs> Four monsters. The brush itself is not monstrous. And then we're gonna come in here. And especially with cloth, I've always found that that it washes, uh, I think, really perform well on on cloth because they've got a lot of sort of distinct patterns to them. And that's really what the wash is for, is to help sort of bring those patterns out. So now we can we can see the different folds of the fabric much better, which is very, very nice. It's precisely what we're looking for. I think we're still gonna do some highlighting on the pants because I want to really bring those those lines out, but for now that's a good start. I'm a little thick on the back. Don't want to glop it on too much. All right, now it's going to be really fun. As you can see, the really see the difference between the leather of his spear versus the leather of his loincloth. Once we get that crimson shade on, flesh shade, cardboard crimson. It's one of my favorites. I think to really get the most out of the uh, my paint shaker, I'm gonna need to get some agitators. Um, if you ever wondered why a rattle can, when it rattles, makes the sound it does, it's because it has an agitator in it. So it's essentially just a small piece of material that uh, that when it's shook, it sort of you know agitates, it rattles around. Ooh, yeah. See, this is why I really enjoy this particular wash. And you can already see the difference between the loincloth and the spear. Like they've, and that was with the exact same base color. But now because my wash is different, it's really changed the look of the two browns. I think I've used this this brown and red combo before on the snail. Um, there's a, a snail in this set, and I really enjoyed playing around with that for his little branchy arms. All right. Yeah, look at that difference. And that was the same base color, two different washes, and you're left with two very distinct colors. I just I really enjoy that about washes. And now you can really see the different sort of parts of the leather. Yeah, I like it. Now, we'll let that dry. So much little details on this guy. I love it, but oof, just a lot to do. Coffee break. Ah, uh, delicious coffee. And we're back to it. So, let's see. Do we want to head to the face now? Or do we want to continue with the extremities? Hmm. 
Well, I suppose since we have it now, let's go ahead and do the spear. So the spear is going to be interesting. We're going back to our orange. We want to make it look like rusty metal. So we get a nice bright orange. We'll give that a shake. This one I think is going to need an agitator. The thing to remember about your agitators is you don't want them to be uh, any metal that will rust. Otherwise, they will rust in your paint pot, ruining your paint. So I'm just using some bits of plastic sprue.
Oh, man. <laughs> I've been muted for quite some time. Well, that's a real shame. That is, that is, uh, that is a real shame. It'll be fun going back over the tape to discover where exactly I muted. Oh, bother. Oh, dear. That's... <sighs> oh, what a joy. Speaking of happy accidents... Well, you've been able to enjoy the, the watching me paint, so I suppose that that's good. What a shame. All right. Now the teeth are going to be very, very hard. Just a little tiny, little tiny bot, uh, spots. And then I'll bring his teeth out. Very nice. All right. So, <laughs> so much time without sound. That is just great. Let's go ahead and get this spear done. Because we're almost at the end of our time. And it'll be good to have the spear finished. To kind of show you what it's supposed to look like. All right. We're going to go ahead and shake up our metallic. I'm not going to mute again because then I won't unmute. So I am sorry you will have to listen to the hum, but at least you get to hear something. I'm going to put our metallic onto the wet pal or the dry palette because I don't want extra moisture going in there because we will be dry brushing. Speaking of which, let's head over to our dry brush. Take and get a bit on your brush and then begin wiping it off until um, there's very little remaining on the brush. And then we're going to come over here to our spear tip and we're going to hit the edges. And again, the reason for this is because it all of the uh, sort of upraised areas are the places where the spear would be contacting things and rubbing the rust off. As you can see, there's some sort of pockets of areas that um, are keeping that that rust look, and those are the the sort of nooks and crannies, which is precisely where rust would build up. Now, you'll uh, on occasion you will have parts that are very sort of thin and delicate so you'll have to be careful with your dry brushing but this guy is a pretty pretty stout part so i can i can dry brush with relative impunity just have to make sure it doesn't fall off my paint stand all right and now we got a sort of rusty spear tip. And I suppose the final step is to, oh yeah. Final step is to get that little bit of vine that goes up onto the spear and 
And then that will be the end of our session. I hope you all enjoyed this. There are specific painting techniques that you want to, to learn more about, are interested in. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if there are any of the supplies that you had questions about, um, want to learn more about, more than willing to, to, to learn you about it. I believe next week we'll be going back to some battle tech. So that'll be a lot of fun. It was just nice to get some some work done on these little goblins. They've been they've been staring at me and, and needing needing attention for a while, so it's nice to get to work on them. There we go. Yeah, look at that little guy. Crazy frog goblin. Again, there's still a lot of work to do. There's probably one more session and we'll get this guy done, but it's starting to look good. It's starting to like it. So those teeth turned out really well. I was not expecting that. I just need to not mess up the teeth. Alrighty, well... Hope uh, you all enjoyed that uh, painting video. Um, sorry about the, the dead spot there in the middle where I didn't have sound. Um, uh, and yeah, next week, uh, like I said, more Battletech minis. Those teeth. But until then, stay safe, enjoy your painting. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you next week.